so when I started getting into mountain biking and mountain bike racing back in 2010, 2011, I was trying to find the fastest rolling tire with very little regard to cornering or grip. I wasn't as good of a rider back then and I would slow to a crawl on descents anyways. As I've evolved as a mountain biker and gained more confidence in the ability of tires in general, I soon realized that I was faster with slower rolling tires. There's always been this fine line of grip, speed, and weight when it comes to tires. So when Victoria launched their down country specific tire in the Sierra. I was eager to throw them on my down country specific bike to see if they could offer a fast yet aggressive ride. And in today's video, we're going to find out. Let's do it. This video is supported in part by Salsa Cycles. And in this video, I ended up pedaling the Salsa Cycles Spearfish. Salsa is adventure by bike. Salsa makes mountain, gravel, all road, and fat tire bikes, each designed to enrich and enhance their experiences. Salsa really does understand that adventure by bike changes lives. So to learn more about Salsa Cycles and their products, you can hit this card right here or head to salsacycles.com. The 2.4 inch Victoria Sierra only comes in one spec. So there's really no headache of deciding on certain tire widths or tire protections. And to be quite honest, this was one of the reasons why I purchased this tire, the simplicity. One of the defining features of the Sierra is that Victoria went with a 60 TPI casing over 120 TPI casing. Uh, 120 TPI casing basically means that there's less rubber, which is going to make a lighter tire. 60 TPI casing means there's going to be more rubber, which means it's more durable, but it's going to be a heavier tire. The Sierra is made up of four compounds. They're more firm, 2XE compound in the middle here, and then they're softer, two trail compound on the side. And this is pretty standard procedure for tire manufacturers. Not only does this help with gripping while cornering, but it also helps with rolling efficiency. The tire also comes with their anti-pinch flat insert, which is closer to the bead of the tire here, which is supposed to protect the tire from puncturing when you pinch your tire up against the rim. This feature got a really good workout, which we will touch on later in the video. So the tread pattern is not that busy. It's got short to medium depth lugs that are rather nicely spaced out. And instead of a continuous or offset center tread that Victoria is known for in the Mezcal and the Saguaro, the middle tread here is mirrored and it's slightly off center. Uh, and this helps the tire not only roll, but also grip up steep climbs, uh, and it also aids in braking performance. Now, Victoria added very little transition lugs or lugs within the transition space, uh, which gives the tire a channel for dirt and debris to fill in uh, between the gaps so that it can actually lock the tire into the ground. This channel also is intended to help shed debris or light mud. So installing these tires, I actually used the Sierra tires with XC Cushcore tire inserts. And I have more thoughts on tire inserts and Cushcore, uh, but I do need a little bit more time with them. So stay tuned for a future video on that. Feeling these tires out of the packaging, they felt very inconsistent. There was a few parts of the sidewall that just felt really thin versus the rest of the tire. So I weighed the tires before I mounted them and they came out to 802 grams and 833 grams. So that actually might've played a part of the inconsistency that I was feeling. That all said, both tires came under 850 grams, which was their advertised weight. I mounted the Sears up using a floor pump on these Industry 9 315C wheels with no issues. And after a few hundred miles, the tire flexed out to exactly 2.4 or just over 2.4 inches, which is welcoming considering most of the tires I use measure under their claimed width. So after mounting the tires, rolled out of the garage into the alley, and I indeed did notice that the tire does a pretty good job of rolling. No, it's not the fastest rolling mountain bike tire I've pedaled, but it is quick. So as I made my way to the trailhead and up that dirt road and eventually single track, the tire maintained that quick feel, digging into the ground, paddling through debris without issue. It cornered at really slow speeds, just fine. And that lighter weight certainly helped get the tire turning quickly uh, when I wanted to engage kneel energy, which if you've ever pedaled with me, you would understand. 
But once I pointed the Sierra downhill, the tire felt very inspiring right off the bat. It transitioned with ease on some smooth, kitty litter filled trails and felt sturdy and supported and pretty darn comfortable and predictable. It did a pretty good job of holding planted corners and managed light-footed transitions from side to side with confidence. After taking it on some more rugged, unpredictable terrain, the tire would show a few more inconsistencies. It was definitely pretty unpredictable on wet routes and in wet conditions, especially once mud got caked in between the lugs. The tire would act as a slick and had a hard time shedding that mud. When the tire was free of mud, however, it gripped really well, both on dirt and off camber rock and terrain. But the more rocky conditions I got into, the more bounce around I felt. It felt very similar to other tires in this class, but much more harsh compared to say a 2.6 inch tire. For example, the Agara, which I really love. The biggest issue with this tire was kind of quick hits or when I hit the tire on a rock just the wrong way. The tire would collapse. Three separate occasions, I actually got a pinch flat, and it really didn't seem like it took too much effort to accomplish this, not to mention a handful of other near misses or times where the cush core actually worked as intended. Because of this, I always felt like I needed to run my tire pressure slightly higher. For a 2.4 inch tire, typically I would run 20.5 PSI in the rear and 17.5 PSI up front, but I continually found myself adding two or three extra pounds to compensate because of those punctures. This would lead to a significantly more harsh ride than it actually needed to be. Overall, the tread is in pretty great shape, and despite those punctures, the tire has plenty of life left to it. So I think I need to thank Dynaplug for keeping these tires on the ground and out of a landfill. All right, so this all begs the question, with these XC bikes or down country bikes becoming more and more capable, is a rather lightweight 2.4 inch tire not enough for these bikes? I think in this case with the Sierra, it depends on where and how you ride it. If you are a planted rider that doesn't take large hits, I think this is a fantastic tire. If you find yourself in more mixed terrain where sharp rocks can be found, it might not be a wise decision to send it like a mountain lion is chasing you. There is no doubt that the Sierra I think was well thought out and it had good intentions. It's really confidence inspiring while descending for a tire in the 2.4 inch category. It worked in a wide variety of conditions as well and rolls nearly as fast, if not as fast as all of the other XC tires on the market. It was fleet and sure-footed, but because of its grippy design, it gave me more confidence beyond its own good or its own durability. Not to mention at 160 USD for a set of tires and some Dynaplug plugs, it's not cheap, especially when you compare a relatively similar feeling tire and the American Classic Muaka, which is nearly at half the price. Ideally, I would love it if this tire came with a more durable protection, but then again, that just might defeat the purpose of the Sierra. For now, I do think I'm still more comfortable rocking, say, a trail tire like the Victoria Agaro versus the Sierra, but there's definitely a time and place, and it all depends on who you are. So what are your thoughts on the downcountry Sierra? And do you like the direction of these XC tires? Let me know in the comment section below. As always, until next time, pedal further.